Welcome to Never a Truer Word, where we look at the words that people choose to use to see if they are telling the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And Gypsy Rose Blanchard is under the microscope in this bonus video. Uh, she's just been released from prison. She is with her husband, who she married in prison. But are they happily married? Well, they've been speaking to People magazine, and we're going to look at their words, and I'm going to tell you why I don't think this is going to be a happy marriage, looking at the statements that they gave to People magazine. The background, Gypsy Rhodes Blanchard uh, got out of jail recently. She was in jail for over eight years. Um, she, whilst in jail, she married a guy called Ryan Anderson, and now she's been released. They are together for the first time as a couple. They've given this interview to People magazine, which is linked in the description. Um, and I'm just... I've got to put it right out there. If you stick with this, you're going to find out why I think they have a doomed relationship, although there is a bombshell coming at the end, which I can't wait for you to see. So what to watch for in this is, as people, what we're focused on is revealed by what we speak about and how we speak about it. Even if we're trying to keep things in or hide things from people, because it's high priority in our mind, the, 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 our focus will slip out. It will really come out. And that's what I want you to look for when we look at the words of Gypsy and Ryan um, as we go through them. If the like button is there, if you press that, that means this gets to more people. And just thinking about it, this video isn't just going to help you understand what's going on in Gypsy and Ryan's relationship. You could use this to work out what's going on in other relationships in your life, people uh, that you know in your family, maybe even your own relationship if you see how people talk about relationships. If you press the like button, you are spreading that knowledge around the world. Always interested in comments that you have as well. You can get in touch on social media or drop a comment here if you can, um, or an observation, or if you think I got something wrong, let me know. If you share this as well, again, the knowledge of how to look at the words that people use to describe a relationship could be really useful. And if you press the subscribe button, then you will get more content like this when it is released. And if you do that, thank you very much. So are you ready? Let's look at the words. And it's Gypsy first. She says... I think the only fear I have is, honestly, just making sure that we have good conflict resolution. I'm a very in-the-moment type of person, so I want to make sure if we have an argument, I want to clear it up in the moment. He is the opposite, where he has to sit on things and think about it, and then come back a couple of hours later and resolve it. I've never lived with a man. I grew up with a mom, so I, don't e I didn't even grow up with a dad in the house. So I'm like, I don't even know what it's like to live with a man. So where is Gypsy's focus there, do you think? This is where I think it is. Conflict, arguments, people being opposed to each other. She talks about conflict re resolution. Um, the, her thing that she's focused on is what happens if we have an argument. She describes Ryan as the opposite to her. And even uh, she talks about the concept of a man, which is the opposite to her, a woman will come on to why she talks about that there but i think her focus is on conflict arguments and people being the opposites of each other she uses words like honestly just so and never in fact in that really short statement that she's given to people in that magazine there she uses four of the eight words that liars use the eight words that liars use is a quick hack to see if someone is possibly being deceptive or lying when they talk to you if you want to read more about it there is a book available there's a link in the description where you can buy the book it's a really quick way to see if the people you're hearing from are lying to you just like gypsy here i think she's being deceptive she has a four out of eight score on the eight words that liars use zone in on what she said first she says, I think the only fear I have is, honestly, just making sure that we have good conflict resolution. Now, she may want to give the impression here that she has only one fear, but she doesn't say that. She says, I think the only fear I have is, she only thinks it, she doesn't know it. She doesn't say the only fear I have, she just thinks that's the only fear. So I think it's highly possible that there are more fears inside her head and that she's trying to narrow it down to just this one when she's talking so that it looks really really good i've only got it's a great relationship i've only got one fear by the way she could have mentioned lots of nice things about ryan in this interview and that's all that's been chosen 
that that's great but this is something that's definitely focused on because these are very authentic words from her ish um apart from the fact she has more fears um she uses the word honestly the only fear i have is honestly uh, when someone feels the need to tell you they are being honest by saying something like honestly this happened or to tell you the truth uh why are they flagging up that they're telling the truth? Two possibilities. Number one is they've been lying all the other times. Um, and actually this time I'm going to put a flag down because I'm being honest. Or more likely is this is a bit deceptive and I really want you to believe this. So that I'm going to tell you how honest this is. I'm going to persuade you that this is genuine. Look, honestly, this is true. Same thing with just. Just is used in deception all the time. Uh, what it does is it you know, it says, focus on this thing I'm going to tell you because this is just all that's going on. Don't focus on anything else. Just is used to make things seem really small and to make it seem like it's the only thing there. Whereas quite often if someone says, I'm just making sure uh, that we have good conflict resolution, that's not all that's going on. There is a lot more going on, but they only want you to focus on this one part, which is why they used the word just. Why do I think this is quite credible and authentic from Gypsy? Look at how many times she uses I, I think, I have, I'm a very, I want, I want, I've never, I grew, I didn't, I'm like, I don't. She says I a lot of the way through that statement. When we use I a lot, most often we're being honest because what we're doing is joining ourselves, the I, with what happens next. If people drop the pronouns, um, so if she'd said, never live with a man, grew up with a mom, less honest because she hasn't attached herself to it. But she says, I've never lived with a man. I grew up with a mom. So I think there's a lot of honesty there. She's talking from the heart, which is why she's using the word I a lot and really putting herself in what she says. Compare that to how often she talks about Ryan. He gets referred to twice in that statement and both times he, he is the opposite. He has to sit on things. So he doesn't get his name. He's distant. He's he over there. Again, it's that feeling that they are um, apart in her head, um, that he is the away there. He's somewhere else. And how many times does she refer to them as a couple? It's just twice. Um, we ha I want we to, uh, are making sure that we have good conflict resolution if we have an argument. So actually the we is there twice. We suggests unity. If you see someone in a relationship, if they talk about we and our quite a lot as pronouns, that suggests they do really feel united with the person that they are with. Uh, she only uses it twice there compared to the amount of time she says I. And both times it's um, making sure that we have good conflict resolution. And if we have an argument, so not the strongest things to say to put we to. Uh, in the last part of that, I never lived with a man. I grew up with a mom. I didn't even grow up with a dad in the house. So I'm like, I don't even know what it's like to live with a man. That was really interesting to me. I see some distance. So she doesn't say, I grew up with mom, uh, which I get. A lot has happened between them. Um, so um, she's putting that distance there. It's not, I, I grew up with, with mom. It's, I, I grew up with a mom. So that's distant. I think there's distance between her and the dad as well, which I know has been physical distance at the time. Um, although maybe a dad, when she uses uh, that, is referring to the concept of a father. So um, her mother and father split up, but there was no stepfather in the house, for example. That could be that, but I do get there is distance, justifiable distance between her and, and her parents. But also she talks about a man. I don't know what it's like to live with a man. And well, again, she's focusing on the differences. And what are the differences between living with a woman and a man? I know they're very different creatures, but what is it that's going on in her head? And I wonder if there's something a bit intimate going on there that um, it's not living with as in being in the same house, but it's living with as in living with a couple that do intimate things together. I wonder if that's what she's talking about there. Okay, what's Ryan got to say for himself? Well, Ryan starts off by saying, Gypsy's never been on a real date where you go and sit somewhere and eat and go to a movie or do whatever. Straight away, I notice a bit of a difference here. He refers to her by name. Gypsy's never been on a real date. Um, it's not she or um, uh, anything that's distant like that. Is calling her real name, respectful, and also a feeling of closeness there. Look at how he describes uh, a real date, where you go and sit somewhere and eat 
and go to a movie or do whatever. Well, what is whatever? He could have kept on with the list, go play bowls, go to an art gallery, uh, go to a bar and drink. But whatever, well, whatever, I think refers to what a lot of dates are about, which is sex at the end of the day. I think that he's been a bit coy there. Um, and why wouldn't he be coy? I'm not going to speak to People magazine about that kind of thing, and neither is he. Um, but he could have just um, finished it there with um, and go to a movie um, or do something similar or, you know, but no, it's do whatever. I think he has sex on his mind. Ryan says, it's going to be a bit of a whirlwind and there'll be a lot of attention. I'm still very nervous about that. I'm a very private person. I think Ryan's focus is on the attention. Whirlwinds are exciting things, aren't they? You know, it's not a storm. It's not a tornado, which are uh, destructive. Um, and, you know, we talk about stormy times. Whirlwinds are, there's a whirlwind of energy. Or, oh, the night was a whirlwind, but it was amazing. So I think he's looking forward with excitement to the attention. I really do. Uh, this next bit is interesting. I'm still very nervous about that. I'm a very private person. Uh, number one, why is a very private person giving an interview to People magazine? So are you really that private person? Well, he's qualified both things. and just try to use the word very, which is persuasive. He could have said, I'm still nervous about that. I'm a private person. But no, he's used very to to persuade us, to show us he's not just nervous, he's very nervous. And um, I'm not just private, I'm very private. I don't think he is very nervous about it. I don't think he is very private. I think he's excited about the whirlwind and the attention, but he wants to play that down. And talking to the whirlwind and the attention, on who or for who, he doesn't say, it's going to be a whirlwind for Gypsy. There's going to be a lot of attention on Gypsy. He doesn't say that. Why not? Is it because really what he's excited about is him being in this whirlwind and him getting the attention? I think that's very possible. Ryan says, there's not much she doesn't know about me. Again, I think this is one of those sayings where you want to give the impression of one thing, but the words belie you and they say another thing. So I think the impression he would like to have given is, I'm an open book. We've got a great relationship. We're so connected that we know everything about each other. I think that's the impression, but it's very hard to give impressions. Our words leak out and our focus leaks out. There's not much she doesn't know about me. He stated it in the negative. So his focus is on what she doesn't know about him. And I'm interested in what that is. I think there's specifically something or some things that Gypsy doesn't know about him um, and that's why he stated it like that. That's why he hasn't said, we know almost everything about each other. No, he's focused on what Gypsy doesn't know about him. Ryan continues, now it's kind of like, oh, you're in the public eye now, go out there and experience it. But we've decided that every night we're going to lay in bed, we're going to talk to each other and check on each other and see how we're doing because it is going to be crazy for a minute. Once again, He's talking about the public eye and being out there and experiencing it. And he says, you're in the public eye now. And I'm interested in who he means by you're when he's talking there. Is this something he said to Gypsy? Hey, Gypsy, you're in the public eye now. Or is it self-talk? Hey, you got this, Ryan. You're in the public eye now. Again, I think it might be the latter. I think he's really excited about the attention that he's going to get from uh, being out with her where and now she's released from prison and the experiences that he's going to get. I think this is about, he's not interested, he hasn't said I'm interested in the attention that Gypsy's going to get. He's kept it very bland and I think that's why. I think it's him that is excited. This is a really interesting passage. We decided that every night we're going to lay in bed, we're going to talk to each other and check on each other and see how we're doing. Nice sentiment, but look at the priorities. The things we mentioned first are normally the most important things to us and things decrease in priority the further we go. Um, so what he's not saying is the most important thing is that we're going to talk to each other and see how we're doing. The most important thing, the thing he mentions first is every night we're going to lay in bed sex on his mind again I believe every night we're going to lay in bed and we're going to talk to each other and check in each other and see how we're doing now the actual sentiment there talking about laying in bed 
doesn't even come into it. If he said every night we're going to talk to each other and check in each other and see how we're doing, it doesn't matter to us where it happens. Could happen sitting down having a meal. Could happen while they're sitting watching TV. But we, the things we focus on, they come out in what we say. That's why I think he mentions laying in bed and then talking to each other and then seeing how we're doing. But look how often he uses the word we compared to Gypsy earlier. This is nice. We've decided, joint, we're going to lay in bed, joint, we're going to talk to each other, double joint, we're and each other, and check on each other and see how we're doing. So from that, I get a much bigger sense of a bond with Gypsy than I got when she spoke about him. That's all we've got. What do you think about the relationship now you've seen that? Happy ever after or doomed? Here's my conclusion. A gypsy is focused on their differences and on conflict, them being the opposites. She's really internal in her focus about how they relate to each other, and she doesn't think it's going to be that great. Gypsy shows few signs of being joined up with Ryan. They are, it's him and her. They are two different people. She doesn't show much relationship between them. Although, wait for the bombshell, because it's coming next. Ryan, meanwhile, he's focused on the attention. He's focused externally, what this relationship is going to bring him. Um, being in the public eye, the whirlwind, the experience that's going to be there. Ryan is very focused on that. Ryan does see them as much more of a couple. He does see them as a, a sort of joint uh, unit, I think. But I think sex is an issue for them both. I think uh, Gypsy, a bit worried about it. Ryan, a bit desperate for it, if I'm being honest. And that was where I was going to leave it. And just when I finished putting all this together, my attention was drawn to an Instagram post from Ryan, or more importantly, the comment that Gypsy has put on the Instagram post from Ryan, where she says, I don't know what Ryan has said to say this. I haven't had time to look into it. But Gypsy says on this post, Ryan, don't listen to the haters. I love you. And there's some I and there's some warmth there. And you love me. We do not owe anyone anything. Our family is who that who's who matters. So there we have we and we have our and we have family. If you get likes and good comments, great. If you get hate, then whatever, because they don't matter. I love you. Besides, they jealous because you are rocking my world every night. Yeah, I said it. The D is fire. Happy wife, happy life. Uh, so I think what you can get from that is definitely the sex is happening. Um, I'm still, Gypsy is focused on opposites, the haters, um, the people that like you versus the people that give you hate. So she's still a bit focused on opposites and conflicts. Absolutely sure of that. Um, I, I, yes, she does mention we more in this than she mentioned in the jail interview. Um, but I still, look, it's there's still two half, different people, quite a lot there. Um, she's telling Ryan what to do. I love you. You love me. That's two different things. It's not we love each other. Um, so again, I love you. And then um, this sex looks one way as well because it's him doing it to her. If you read her words there. Yeah. So remember, if you take one thing away from this, it's not the thought that I've just implanted in your head about what happens at night in their house. Remember, what we're focused on is revealed by what we speak about and how we speak about it. If you want more like this, press the subscribe button and it will magically arrive on your devices. I'd really be interested in your comments and your thoughts and your opinions, so feel free to comment here or on social media. And like I said, the like button is the magic that shares this content around the world and then maybe helps more people understand what's going on in relationships. The share button does a very similar job, but in a different way. If you press any button, thank you very much. Neveratruerword.com is a website. There's a lot more podcasts. You can connect on the socials, sign up for the newsletter. There's a whole lot more videos and there's a couple of books as well, including the eight words that liars use. And we'll see you again for something more from Never A Truer Word soon.